tonight's boxing action proudly brought to you by Madison Sport. Hello everyone and welcome to In The Red Corner. We're showing you some highlights tonight from the ABA Stadium as we watch the ABA Stadium in uh, Auckland, New Zealand as we watch Mapush Makembe, the South African from Cape Town, South Africa as he prepares for his challenge for the WBA Pan-African Super Middleweight Champion and there's the champion Peter Karayuki, formerly of uh, Nairobi in Kenya. My name is Brad Vakali and welcome well, tonight. We've got a wonderful night rooms. for you as we listen to the referee's instructions. Fight. Protect yourselves on the and obey my commands. Touch him up. Good luck. Our referee Fred Marsh tonight. Go guys. And we're showing you highlights that happened on this fight. We're back on September 22 this year and it was an interesting fight at that Peter Karayuki in the red trunks with the white band and striping and Mapush McKembe, the Lion King from East London, born in East London, lives in uh, East London in South Africa that is and of course uh, lives in Cape Town, a worthy challenger. He is the Southpaw leading with his right hand. Karayuki known to Australian visitors, uh, Brian, he's been here many times. Joining me with me tonight of course is uh, Red Corner's uh, Brian Kerwin. Thank you very much Bradley. You've refereed Peter Karayuki a number of times, I believe. I have, and uh, he's a, a quality fighter. He uh, started his career after he came back from the uh, uh, Olympics. He went to South Australia where he was with uh, Austin Taylor over there and had some real success over there as we see him uh, push McKenby back into the uh, into the corner. That's where he wants to get it. That's where he's going to do his best work. Look at the size in the difference of uh, Karayuki. We've seen him um, a number of times fight at light heavyweight, the 79.38 kilogram uh, limit. He's, uh, he's a lot bigger, but... Uh, McKenby won't be um, disadvantaged by that because he has got great hand speed and he is tough. It's good to see Peter Karayuki fighting as a super middleweight. He's taken fights at cru even up to the cruiserweight limit. Yeah. This is his ideal weight and this is where he performs best. I think he's 11 and 11 wins from 12 fights as a super middleweight. Yeah, exactly. And he's got great hand speed um, and he's a big super middleweight. You know, I mean, he's a bigger super middleweight than Anthony Mundine. You know, so it... Uh, as he pops out that left hand. A very well-balanced fight. You see how he balances very well. He's moving around as uh, McKenby goes across for that. That's the punch that Karayuki needs to look at, that little short left cross, because that's a dangerous punch. And he can punch a bit, McKenby. He's, uh, he's been around for a little while. He's uh, self-managed, trained by Menzi Nkwodi. And um, 43 professional fights, 30 wins, 19 by way of knockout, and roughly two-thirds of his wins by knockout, McKenby. Former South African light middleweight champion, junior middleweight, and uh, he's been in the ring with some very, very good fighters. Peter Karayuki, Brad, did some sparring with Anthony Mundine in the lead-up to uh, the fight with Denny Green, and Mundine was rated him very highly. I did, yes, and I, I refereed his fight when he fought... Uh Glenn Kelly in in, um, in Chengdu in China and what an absolute war it was unbelievable he had Glenn Kelly down twice and uh, it was a real war Glenn got off the deck as we uh, as we look at McKenby in the green and silver trunks and uh, just feeling each other out a little bit there at the moment just sort of trying to assess where their strong points and their weak points the body punching of um, of Karayuki will be the the difference here as you see him searching down low there just a little bit low but he's searching that certainly caught uh, McKenby's uh, attention that one and I think uh, McKenby's moving around to his right which is the way to go because he doesn't want to be walking onto um, Peter Karayuki's right hand hey! and as we see the end of the first round it's a good round for uh, Peter Karayuki Here we are in the third round now, and uh, Peter Karayuki has sort of just started to really assert his dominance. He's just going first. He's just on top of McKenby, and of course in the second round he's just been a clear leader. And oh, it's a big right hand. That was a clubbing bolo. There it is again. He's doubled up with the right hand. He's got uh, McKenby in a little bit of trouble here. Works the body. A little bit unsteady on his feet, but pushed the Lion King's in a little bit of strife as Karayuki unloads. It's the big right hand that's going to do the damage here, Brian. The push is just looking for some way out here. He's not trying to hold on. Well, he needs to get on. He needs to get on his bike and get mobile because if he stands here, he's going to find himself on the seat of those lovely pants that he's got. And uh, Karayuki just letting him off the hook a little bit here uh, in uh, at the ABA Stadium here in Auckland. Oh, there's another big searching right hand to the body and another one to the head. And I think Mapush is just a little bit mystified as to what angle these punches are coming because they're not coming at straight. They're coming in a sort of semi-bolo punch. 
just trying to line him up, work him. With, you can see the angle with that right hand's coming, and that's that's um, confusing Mapush McKenby a little bit here. He searches to the body again. McKenby comes back with his own little left cross. He's still dangerous though when he when he fights back. Oh, he's, he can. He can bang a bit. And Karayuki could find himself on the seat of his pants very, very quickly if he doesn't watch what he's doing here. He works him into the neutral corner. He goes with a left lead. McKenby comes across with that dangerous little left cross. And yet somehow, Brian, I don't think we... You know, he's certainly behind it. There's... Uh, Staring down the barrel of a defeat in the push, but I don't think this fight's over by a long way yet because Karayuki hasn't really asserted his authority. This is the the hardest round that he's um, had to face with uh, McKenby. He does seem to have backed off a little, Lee, whether he's uh, worried about the 12 and rounds. that's the end of the fight. Oh, he gives up. Oh, Peter Karayuki's gone down. <laughs> He's uh, milking one for referee. referee Freddie Marsh is more interested in giving McKembe a, a stern talk to as Pete takes a bit of a break. As we now head into round number four as referee Freddie Marsh brings the boys to centre ring. And uh, Peter Karayuki is certainly on his way to defending both his PABA, the Pan-Asian Boxing Association Super Middleweight Championship, and the WBA, the Pan-African Super Middleweight title. And uh, we've got a good fight on our hands here. Brad, that was a strong, he's a strong round three for uh, Karayuki. How would you have it scoring so far? Oh, I'd, at this stage, I'd have uh, Karayuki 30-27, and some judges probably might have even judged that a 10-8 round. He was totally dominant there. Even though there wasn't a knockdown, Brian, so we know we've got the right to judge, um, to judge as uh, Freddie... There's been a low blow yeah. there, Bradley. I just, I just missed that low blow, and... Uh, the push, he's going to milk this for what he can, and... He's uh, given him five minutes. Yeah, the standard rule is that uh, most most guys are that. It was that was an accident. I don't think don't think that there was any intention in that. Uh, Just Peter's a pretty good sportsman. Yeah, but can be straight back into it now with that typical southpaw stance, looking to, from go low to high, and that left lead. See where it's hanging down around his uh, around his ankles. He's uh, wanting to that left lead's going to come straight back up in an angle underneath the chin, but that hasn't worked with Karayuki yet as he walks him back to the ropes. Peter Karayuki, extremely strong in Chris. He's a very, very strong kid. Very well balanced. The southpaw doesn't seem to be bothering him? No, it hasn't because, you know, to, to be effective against that little low blow again by McKenby, but he's just searching low trying to work the body of uh, Karayuki. Uh, what happens is if you want to nullify a southpaw's, oh, he works the body again under the rib cage. Oh, he's going to wake up with a shirt full of rib, sore ribs tomorrow, um, a push. But, uh, you know, right hands will always nullify Southpaw's uh, best points and he follows by the left hook. Just can't find a range, McKenby, at the moment. He's just a little bit too far out. He's fighting from out in where, what I call no man's land, Brian. He's just a little bit too far out to hit and yet he can be hit himself. So there's that punishing right hand over the top, misses with the left hook. Karayuki looks like he's done the work too. Looks very fit, Peter. Fought some of Australia's best. Fought Paul Briggs challenge for the OPBF Cruiser uh, Light Heavyweight Championship as well. Fought Glenn Kelly. Wait, Jeez, wait. he's been here with some good fighters. He's showing his class tonight. He has. Yeah, he has. He's actually found a niche over there in New Zealand. And, you know, he's got he's got a good management team uh, behind him, Brian. I know you know them very well. And uh, and they've um, they've done the right thing by him and uh, given him something to fight for. John Glazier now managing him and Heartland Boxing promoting him. And they're looking to get him and Muhammad Azui a shot at a world title in the med in immediate future. And, look, that's not out of the realms of anything because, I mean, these two kids are very, very capable. You know, when you look at his background, as he clubs McCamby with that right hand, solid left lead. McCamby needs to get a little bit mo more mobile. He starts, needs to move. He's just standing there in front. You know, he's with the term. Oh, as we see the end of round number four. And we're going to take a break right here at Red Corner. Welcome back to the ABA Stadium in Auckland and we're watching the PABA WBA Pan-African Championship and you're watching in the red corner between Peter Karayuki in the red shorts against South Africa's Mapush Makambi. I'm Brad Vakali and here with me is Brian Kerwin in the red corner promotions. And we've got a fight on our hands on our unofficial scorecard tonight. I see it that we have uh, Peter Karayuki roughly 40-36 as he clubs uh, McCamby with that solid right hand. Brian, how do you see it at this stage? Definitely all one-way traffic, Peter Karayuki. Mapush McCamby needs to pull something out big. He and, does. Uh, and he needs to land that big left hand. 
and he's very capable of doing it. Even though he's standing there, he's a little bit pedestrian at this particular time. I don't see this fight as being over. McCamby tends to come on a little bit stronger in the middle to later rounds of his fights. He's, he's a strategist. He works his strategy out, and he sort of tries to get someone to slow himself down. As oh, Now he's changed his strategy a little bit there. Karayuki, right hand, left rip to the body. That certainly caught um, a pusher's attention. I think the size is the difference here at the moment. Karaoke's just the bigger, taller, longer reach. And stronger, a little bit yeah. more intimidating. And, of course, he's got uh, faster hand speed. He's just beating uh, push to the to the punch here. And uh, he just he can't handle the... Not only can he, can he handle not the hand speed, but also the angle the punch is coming. There's that solid right hook we saw from McCamby. That's a punch that he needs to be very weary of, uh, Peter Karaoke, is that solid right hook, because that's going to come to him at an angle that he's not used to. He's normally used to fighting orthodox fighters, so they look at the left hook. But McCamby will come across with a solid left lead as well after the right hook, which is a dangerous dangerous punch because you square on. There's the right hook again, caught, uh, caught Peter Karayuki. Had a wonderful career, Karayuki, and uh, started that off here in Australia. A little bit of a lull in the action there, but McCamby, he's not done yet. Start to get a little bit more mobile. There's a right-left cross. That caught the attention of uh, Peter. Oh, there it is again. He's actually hurt Karayuki. His mouth has come. His mouthpiece has come out. Brian, that's a uh, little bit of a turnaround there. Peter Karayuki hey, looks hey, in all hey, sorts of trouble hey. at the moment. He's on rubber legs at the moment, is Peter Karayuki. The left cross came out of nowhere. Walking backwards now as McCamby doesn't take, doesn't charge at his opponent, takes his time. Look at the biceps on the push. He's done the work as well. Right lead followed by the left cross that just missed. Trying to set up his opponent, work him into his corner. The mouth guard's come out. It's, it's uh, interesting that uh, Freddie Marsh hasn't put the mouth guard back in yet. Brad, when I was over there filming, I thought uh, I'd seen that happen on a number of occasions, and I was that's absolutely... Not, yeah. That's our rules. You know, if the mouth guard's out, fighter welfare is, is vitally important as McCamby backs him up. This is a good round for the <laughs> South African visitor. Can he rest the WB? As we see the end of the fifth round, and boy, have we got a fight on our hands as we come now to... The start of round number six here at the ABA Stadium here in Auckland. And you're watching in the red corner promotions. Brad Vicali here with Brian Kerwin. And we've got a fight on our hands as Mapush McCamby stamped his authority in round number five and took the fight right up to Peter Karayuki. It was good to see the power that McCamby does possess. And uh, obviously with the record that he has, he's, uh, he's knocked out a fair few opponents. Well, he has. And, uh, and some of those opponents have been quite worthy opponents as well. And uh, he's fought some good fighters. Peter Mashiamite, who's, uh, who's fought for an IBO. Oh, there's a big right hand by Karayuki. That hurt the push. And there he's down. Freddie Marsh is going to send him to the neutral corner. He's in dreamland at the moment, the push. But listen, this kid has got plenty of kicker. He'll get up from this. A little unsteady on his feet. They wouldn't call him the Lion King if he wasn't tough, Brad. No way. By golly. That was a clubbing right hand right on the chin. And I reckon that would have dropped an elephant. But Mapush McCamby is right there as he works away. He's trying to get the uh, clear the cobwebs, get himself back into this fight. This is where he's getting caught, though. He's, he's backing up to the ropes, and Peter Karaoke is hitting from every angle, and he doesn't know which way to go. Just standing there, flat-footed in the neutral corner. He doesn't need to there. It's the right hand, followed by the left hook. Karaoke just becoming a little untidy now. There's the left cross. And I think Peter Karaoke, after round number five, Brian, I think he's still a little bit weary of that left cross that put him a push can because he hasn't jumped on him after having him down for, a, for an eight count. That seemed like a perfect time to lift the tempo, tempo and try and stop the top stop him he's not going crazy karaoke i think he's showing a lot of respect to Mapush as he tries to bring the right hand mccamby comes around with his own right hook calls karaoke in he wants to get down in the gutter he wants him to get down into his fight he wants to make a fight of it Mapush. Karayuki selective in his punches. There's that clubbing right hand again coming from a, an angle as half an arc gets under the left hook Still showing some wonderful defence, Peter Karayuki. There's that clubbing right hand over the top that almost hit him on the temple. He seems to have his uh, full credentials back, Peter Karayuki. That uh, fifth round where he copped a bit of damage, it seems it to have lifted yeah. from his head. 
Clubbing left hook, left lead. That's great left lead by Kariuki. Really got on, got on top of this round. And the push just content to stay on the ropes, flat-footed and stand there. What I think he's trying to do is bring Kariuki in so that he can throw his own. There's that wild left cross. That's what he's really wanting to do. But three and four punches always beats one. There's the hook. There's the countering left hook in, uh, in reply by Peter Kariuki. Clearly on top in round number six. And a good round, a 10-8 round for the former Ghanaian. Or Norobian, I should say. <laughs> he won't like that. As we're in now, round number seven. Brad, this has been a while since you've seen Peter, Peter Kariuki and probably been a while since you've seen him fight at super middleweight. Uh, are you impressed? How is he, has he yeah, come across? Yeah, very much. The last time I saw him was when I actually refereed him and uh, he was fighting at cruiserweight. So, And he looks a lot better. Look at the body. That little left cross caught his attention there by the push. But he looks a much more complete super middleweight because he's in his, he's in his own rate. That's, and I think the reason he fought at light heavy and, and, and cruiserweight was simply because he couldn't get fights here. But more importantly, he's probably a little bit on the late easy side where he didn't have to make weight and didn't have to work too hard but his new management team over in New Zealand have, have really Johnny Glazier, is, uh, jo uh, John's idea it's his way or the highway, you do it my way and he's made him a much better fighter of course the brother of Bruce goes here we've seen Bruce over here a number of times and uh, um, you know he's really turned uh, Peter Kariuki into what I believe is, is a real threat in this super middleweight division, you know there's some really good fights around for this young guy I mean uh, you know Dale Westerman the OPBF champion and uh, we've got some good super middleweights here as McKamey I think just caught a looked like he caught a thumb in the uh, in the left eye there he poured at that there he's uh, this fight not over by by a, a long shot but uh, just watch some of the action so we're in the side now he's got a little nick to the right eye there was was actually caused by a punch he's just pouring it as we round number seven from the ABA Stadium in Auckland there's a right hand now that's starting to uh, really grab the attention of Mapush McCambi and of course with the right eye bleeding a little bit has taken his attention hey, away hey, from the punch oh hey, Pete just drops back. the head in a little bit there Pete you don't need to do that oh dangerous stuff you can see a little bit of blood trickling from the corner of the left eye of Mapush McCamby and that's making it hard he won't be able to see that semi bolo right hand that uh, Peter Kariuki has executed with absolute perfection tonight this has been a good, tough fight, and it's a great opportunity for Red Corner to go over to New Zealand and bring back these fights to the Australian to, public. And in the Red Corner, look, you're going to see some of the best fights that we have because you're mobile, and Brian, credit to your uh, to your work ethic and the effort that you've put in to be able to bring Australian fight fans, uh, you know, quality fights like this, and this is what they want to see. They just want to see a good quality fight. And this is a quality fight for a quality championship, the WBA Pan-African Championship, which was also... Tony Mun uh, Anthony Mundine held this championship there for a, for a little while, and that's what gave him the right to fight for the world championship when he uh, when he fought and won the world championship. So, uh, and we're going to go to a break. That was the end of the seventh round. Welcome back to In the Red Corner. We're coming to you tonight from the ABA Stadium in Auckland where Peter Kariuki, that man to our left in the red trunks, is defending his WBA Pan-African Super Middleweight Championship in conjunction with the PABA, the Pan-Asian Boxing Association Super Middleweight Championship. And for our Australian fight fans, these two championships were both held by Anthony Mundine prior to him winning the WBA um, Super Middleweight Championship. And we're looking at Peter Kariuki in the red trunks and South Africa's Mapush McCambi from Cape Town in South Africa. So far we have it that uh, we have Kariuki, a clear leader on our unofficial scorecard. McCambi knocked down in round number, uh, round number seven. Done very, very well to get out of the trouble that he was in. And, uh, but he's still in this fight. He's still a danger to this. Right to the last bell, Brian, he'll be, uh, he'll be in this fight, Mapush McCambi, because he is a quality opponent. Oh, hard, stinging left hook by uh, right, right. Peter Kariuki. 
Brad, just for the viewers that uh, un don't understand the regional titles and the and the paths that guys c take to get to the world title shots, can you explain what they can do for a fighter and how they bring them bring them on? Sure. Well, there's been a large prolif pr proliferation of uh, regional championships, and, and some are more worthy than others. The WBA have have reintroduced their regional title, which is the Pan African and also the Pan Asian, the PABA, which we've seen here a number of times. It gives it's a vehicle with which to give some of our better fighters uh, an, a, an easier access. To, to fight for the world championship. We've seen that as Push McCamby comes with his own left cross across to uh, Peter Kariuki. We, we do it with the WBC, with the OPBF. Um, you know, that's their regional body. And uh, they, by, by a, a fighter winning that championship and then defending it a number of times, then it, it gets them into the top 10 rankings a little easier. And then they can fight off from one of their other regional titles, like the, the South African title guy here is fighting for the Pan-African Championship against the PABA. The winner of this might end up with a number four or number three ranking in that in that particular division. And then it's a vehicle with which to get to the top a little easier. Sure, they've got to do the fighting and sure, they've got to get there, but it's a wonderful uh, tool with which to work. If it can be worked very, very well. And, you know, there's two or three of the major bodies that are doing a very, very good job. And just talking about that, of course, we've got some fights coming up on December the 1st here in Brisbane, um, where... Uh, Brian, uh, Brian, we're um, your good mate. Um, Angelo De Carlo is uh, putting on a show at the Mansfield Tavern, and uh, he's been he's going to put on a regional title. I think it's going to be Johnny Cottrell versus Brad Hemming, the junior worldweight, sixty-three point five kilos. Yeah, he's got a big fight night planned. It's December the 1st, and uh, Mansfield Tavern out at Wecker Road. And uh, Nathan Briggs is fighting, Tyrone Tongia, uh, Brad Hemming, of course, and yeah. Cottrell. And that'll be a great fight. What a star of the future, yeah. Tyrone Tongia. A little super middleweight sponsored by Green Machine Promotions over there in Perth, tied up with Danny Green. And... Uh, it's a, a seven-fight card, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful card if you uh, want to get over and have a look at that as we see the end of round number eight. Touch, a touch of gloves who is coming into the ninth round here. Peter Kariuki, a clear leader here in the ABA Stadium in Auckland. Looks like well on his way to defending his PABA, WBA Pan-African Championship. But it's not over till the tenth, final, twelfth and final bell rings. Especially with Mapush McKenby standing in oh, front of absolutely. you. Absolutely. When we talk of uncertainty, he can, and he's got power in both fists, and he's a, a quality fight. You know, you'd have to say, Brian, you know, he's in the twilight of his career these days, but he's one of those guys that if you can't beat him, you're not going to go anywhere anyway, and he's a real test for an up-and-coming guy. And it's sad that a guy like Mapush is there because he's a, he's a middle-of-the-road fighter where the guys above him don't want to fight because he's a real threat, and the guys below him don't want to fight him because if they don't beat him, they're not going anywhere, you know. So he's one of those, you know, what do you call Stick in the mud type fighters that you've got to really do something with. But uh, Peter Kariuki fighting the right fight here tonight in Auckland and uh, he's well on the way and that's why he is the champion. And uh, this could indeed have Peter Kariuki well into, inside the top 10 of the, the World Boxing Association. And uh, don't be surprised that uh, we don't see him fighting in you know a defence of the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. And, and I would dare say that Anthony Mundine is, uh, is really in the box seat now that uh, Mikel Kessler has defeated... Uh, buyer to win the, the championship. He's been elevated to super champion status. The WBA, the domestic um, world championship, is now vacant. Anthony Mundine, Australia's Anthony Mundine, has got a real chance of fighting for that vacant title. And Kariuki would be an ideal eyes. He unloads on the push. There's a big right hand. He works the body, searching under the rib cage, over the top. The push just not sure which way to go. Looks like survival time here for the South African. All the way from East London in South Africa. He's come all the way. Big right hand again. Oh, he's got him in a little bit of strife here, Brian. I think the Lion King is about to be dethroned by the young Lion. Oh, there it is. He's down. Will he get up from this? His referee, Freddie Marsh, puts the eight count. Oh, he's in also. I don't think he's going to get up. Look at the heart of this kid. He's going to get up. He's not going to beat the oh, He's Mr. Freddy. I'm all right. You've got to be kidding. How tough for you, the push for Camby. He says to his corner, don't throw the towel in as Kariuki comes in to put the finishing touches here in the ninth round at the ABA Stadium in Auckland. Big right hand. And he works the body again of McCamby. Showing some real signs of maturity here, Peter Kariuki. Is, uh, Freddie Marsh warns him not to hit on the back of the head. He's not just throwing willy-nilly punches. There's a big right hand again. He's hurt. Push. 
He's still on his feet. The bravery, the heart. He bites hard down on the mouth. Guard the upper side. Freddie's seen enough. He stops the fight. A good decision by referee Freddie Marsh. As a brave Mapush McCambi succumbs to the right hands, the body work, the uppercuts, the hooks. And there we see it. A worthy champion, a worthy winner. And he might well, he smile. He's a very, very happy man. And as they show a great sign of respect, as we see the WBA Pan-African Championship belt, and what a lovely belt that is, gets strapped around the waist of Peter Kariuki, and you've witnessed it here tonight on In the Red Corner.